It's the film that revived the disaster movie genre in the mid-90s and made Will Smith a star. It was the highest grossing film at the box office in 1996, and yet its sequel 20 years later came and went quicker than a sailor on shore leave. It's the day after July 3rd, two days before July 6th. Independence Day was the third collaboration of director Roland Emmerich and producer Dean Devlin, hot off the success of their 1994 film Stargate. Like that film, the pair co-wrote this film together in a script that took a lot of inspiration from H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds and melded it with the star-studded 1970s disaster flicks such as The Towering Inferno and Earthquake. The story's simple, some unnamed aliens show up and blow the shit out of every landmark you can think of. Whoever's left fights back. The end. It's a simple storyline with a lot of random oddball characters who eventually meet up for a coordinated battle at the film's climax. Bill Pullman is former fighter pilot Thomas Whitmore, now newly elected President of the United States. Using the terminology of the time, he was Clinton-esque, which in the 90s meant a youngish, vibrant US President, rather than what it came to mean later on, Horn Dog. His chief of staff, Connie, played by Margaret Collin, who despite having just watched the film, I had to look up what her character's name was since she's only mentioned in passing a few times in the film. But you know her as the ex-wife of computer genius David Levinson, who's actually dead. The person everyone thinks is David Levinson's animated corpse is actually quirky Hollywood actor Jeff Goldblum, played by quirky Hollywood actor Jeff Goldblum. Judd Hirsch plays the father of Levinson, who must accept quirky Hollywood actor Jeff Goldblum as his computer genius son's corpse, despite not being able to understand a man who sounds like a tape recorder with a broken motor that keeps speeding up and slowing down. Which will disable it, and that'll disorient the smaller ships below, and that could buy it, I think, at least some time to, uh, to take them, take them out, take them down. Okay, some of these details might be missing from the theatrical version of the film, or maybe I dreamt them, I don't know. There's Will Smith as Captain Stephen Hiller, a fighter pilot who's been rejected for astronaut training, and his exotic dancer fiancé Jasmine, played by Vivica A. Fox, who, along with her kid, collects survivors and takes them to safety. Randy Quaid plays a comedy drunk crop-dusting pilot who staggers through the film embarrassing his kids, just like our engineer Frank, Did you say my name? until he is somehow able to deliver the coup de grace during the film's climax. That's uh, Randy Quaid, not Frank. You bastard. Mary McDonald plays President Laura Roslin, and their daughter who says nothing is Mae Whitman, so that's a nice little factoid. And then there's a bunch of people whose names you don't know, but whose faces you recognise from that thing. Isn't that that guy from the thing, you know, the guy who played what's-his-name? You know, it's on the tip of my tongue. I'd look it up, but this is 1996 and it takes 10 minutes for my computer to start up, and I've lost my Microsoft Cinemania CD-ROM. I think I lent it to Rick, but that asshole never returns anything. I swear to God that's the last time I lend that prick anything ever again. I think he still owes me money from the popcorn when we went to see this. If you're watching this, Rick, f*** you. It's a dumb film, but not that dumb. It's smart in a few ways, and one of those ways that it's smart enough to realise how dumb it is and play with it. It's still watchable and fun, unlike so many of the follow-up movies from Emmerich, like Godzilla or The Day After Tomorrow. And it came at a time when big-budget sci-fi movies that weren't Star Trek stayed away from space. Independence Day felt like a breath of fresh air, but it wasn't like Terminator or Star Wars and spawning a wave of imitators, apart from maybe Mars Attacks, but it did kickstart effects-laden disaster films nor did it really stick around in people's minds all that much. It was literally cinematic empty calories. So just why did people like it so much? It was a bit like those singing contest shows where you just want the really bad singer to win because of the entertainment value. Today, we celebrate our... This video is sponsored by Stamfine Bottled Water's latest promotion. Every 199th bottle has exactly 10 cc's of hyena blood. 20 years later, the original filmmakers Devlin and Emmerich, who had not worked together for a while, decided to make a sequel along with 20th Century Fox. Independence Day Resurgence was the result, and it's something. While some of the original cast return, Jeff Goldblum and Bill Pullman, and no one cares about anyone else, almost everyone else is new, but somehow still related to characters from the first film. The child characters, Will Smith's adopted son and Bill Pullman's daughter, are played by much more attractive actors than the kids from the first film. Thor's brother is in it, so I guess that makes him Loki. It's hard to describe the plot. Basically, it's 20 years later, human society is in a good place, and the survivors have made good use of the leftover alien technology. But somewhere, something called the aliens back and again it's on and a franchise is reborn i had a hard time watching this film paying attention and having my mind not wander off into thinking about more interesting things like did i take the bins out no why because midnight is friday and today's wednesday well could i pause this fucking awful film and go and take the bins out now 
No, it's two days early. Just watch the film. It's not terrible, but unlike the original, I can't think of a single reason to watch this. It has a weird off-putting digital look, an over-the-top green screen, almost to the point where it feels like the actors went on the set at the same time and just popped in during post-production. The film lacks any of the charm or charisma of the original. Unlike the original, it's not smart enough to know it's dumb. It's dumb because it thinks it's smart like Maxwell Smart, without 99 to prop him up. And this is one of those films where they really, 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 really wanted to make money in China. Like, a lot. Except it did only okay numbers, and certainly not enough for anyone to drop another couple of hundred million on another Independence Day film. If they do make another one, I'll have to get some more bins. Independence Day, as a Fox film, is now owned by Disney, along with the franchises Alien, Predator, Avatar, Indiana Jones, Pixar, Disney Animation, The Lion King, Jungle Book, Aladdin, Star Wars, X-Men, Deadpool, Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, etc. So I'm sure they'll be in a hurry to get round to making a sequel to Independence Day. If you enjoyed this film, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below, check out one of our other videos, and make sure you take the bins out on Friday night.